live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering Grace Hopper's Celebration of Women in Computing. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of the Grace Hopper Conference here in Orlando, Florida. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. We are joined by Vicki Mueller-Burke. She is the Vice President and Chief Diversity Officer at Qualcomm. Thanks so much for joining us, Vicki. Thank you, Rebecca. It's great to be here. So before the cameras were rolling, you were describing how you've been at Qualcomm for 20 years, right. uh, but you've been in this job for one year, and right. you're the first person to ever hold the position. That's right. So tell us how it, tell our viewers how it came about. Yeah, I have been at Qualcomm uh, almost 21 years now and mostly in product development, product management, and then my last role was as a general manager of one of our wholly owned subsidiaries. Uh, and I really thought that my run at Qualcomm was done uh, because we're, you know, we're consolidating a lot of our businesses. Um, we had a, I started working on some women's programs while I was shutting down our last business. And uh, it just so happened it was the same time that the company decided to create a chief diversity officer. My initial reaction was, that's so great, we're going to get one of those people. Uh, we really need them. Uh, I wanted to be a champion for that person. And then uh, I, I started getting myself interested in thinking that I could really be a change agent and a leader for the company and kind of leave a legacy um, back to the company, uh, a company that's actually been really, really good to me. So when you were thinking about this job, you, you described it as a business problem that needed to be solved. And as someone who'd been at Qualcomm right. for two decades, what did you, how did you define the business problem? Yeah, the way that my brain works is uh, I'm a problem solver and that's why I got into product management. And so I, I really thought that um, if the company saw this as compliance or some sort of regulatory issue, I would really have no real interest. But I really knew that we could um, solve the problem by likely re-engineering some of the processes that we had put, uh, that had been in place. And you know, Qualcomm has had a tremendous growth over the years. And we've ramped from, I was employee 5,000 to now well over 30,000. Uh, so many of our processes really just had to be re-engineered, and I knew that I could speak that language to our leaders. We understand re-engineering problems. So I really tried to get down to root cause and, and, and focus on a couple of the areas that would really make a big difference and discuss the business value of why we were doing this. So, so what are the areas that you are focusing on? You know, just give our viewers a sense of the top two or three areas where you think you can have the most impact. The, there's really two levers that, uh, that I'm focused on. One is uh, talent acquisition. So continuing to bring, to bring the best and brightest minds, the most innovative people in the world now to help us move our wireless uh, technology into the 5G world. The possibilities are endless, so we need all kinds of bright minds looking at this from all different kinds of directions. That's the diversity piece of it. Um, the second big lever is once we get them in, we have to keep them. Um, I mean, this show shows how uh, talented women engineers are, are really at uh, premium. And so the more we're hiring, the more we're, you know, we're losing people on the other side. People call that the, the leaky pipeline or the leaky bucket. So I'm, work I'm working on retention programs um, to make sure that once we get uh, our diverse talent in the door that we can keep them by really um, uh, supporting, promoting, uh, progressing them, making sure that they have a wide a variety of opportunities and that they see a bright future for themselves at Qualcomm. So are you starting new programs? Is, is this about mentorship? Is this about making sure there's flexible work? I mean, what are some of the, the nitty gritty things that Qualcomm is doing? Yeah, we have started um, a series of uh, uh, sessions with our senior most leaders, um, what we call like our directors and above. Um, we have terrific support at the sea level at Qualcomm. Terrific support. But a 30,000 uh, person company really need to get into that next couple down layers. And so we're doing training about uh, basically how to run an inclusive team, how to empower. One of the big things that we're training on is the process of how do you pick people for that next big project? 
And like many managers, they go back to the people that have been successful year after year. What we're trying to do is disrupt that and either create like apprenticeship, uh, leader, project leader positions where someone can tag along and, and, and lead and understand um, how those projects were, uh, were run so well. Uh, but that's what we need to do is really try to expand the project opportunities. That's when people get um, a lot of visibility, a lot of experience, and that's where their own talents will just um, then accelerate them through our uh, through our levels. You were talking about the need to make sure that 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 a couple rungs down from the senior brass right. really understand that there is a real business case right. for diverse teams that are collaborative. Right. Right. How, how, how receptive are these managers in your experience and what do you say that really tips them over? Yeah, so Qualcomm is full of extremely bright people. Um, there's an awareness and, and the benefit of the doubt that we're giving all of our employees is let's, let's give you the facts, let's make you aware, um, let's let you drive the solution so that we're all working together. We don't have any kind of quotas, we don't have, um, we just want to make managers give them all the data and have them make good decisions and empower them to be part of the solution. That empowerment to me um, is where we're building trust with those managers. We're not saying, oh, you've been doing it wrong for a million years. We're saying, here's what you can do to get better. Here's what you can do to have a more engaged team. Here's what you can do to have a more empowered team. That leads to productivity. Productivity goes straight to the bottom line, um, and, and it makes sense. Um, so we're trying to do it uh, more in a partnership, giving them the respect that they've earned with the positions that they're in, and empowering them to be the change. So earlier in your career, you worked on some really exciting uh, projects in terms of wearables, in terms of smart cities, in terms of home-based technology. Right. Do you miss the tech? I mean, do you see yourself going back and, and working in that? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, when you're uh, in the business, there are um, daily, weekly, incremental uh, successes. We fixed that bug, um, we got that contract. Um, this is really more, uh, I call it kind of like uh, forming jello. It's hard to get those, um, that feeling every day like you're making progress on something. So um, I'm, I do miss the technology. I don't, this is the biggest problem I think um, I've ever been tasked to solve. So that is uh, extremely inspiring. Um, and luckily I get to work uh, really side by side with a lot of our best technology leaders. Um, but I do miss the I do miss the technology for sure. And working in the business. Sure. So you talked about the, the sort of difficulty with measuring the incremental progress, and then really we're at a point in time where the Google manifesto and um, Travis Kalanick's antics sure. are on our front page news. Right. Right. Does this is this discouraging? Is this or is it? Um, does it make you just more more excited by the cause and what you're doing? Yeah. I. Um, there are aspects to it that are discouraging, but I, uh, I'm really a, a glass half full type of person. I think shining the light, um, really shining this big bright light on the issue makes 99% of the people in our business really say, wow, I can't believe that's really going on. Um, so I actually think it's, uh, it's good. Um, it's allowing us to have these conversations which um, are uncomfortable and a lot of leaders want to have the conversations but they don't know what to say. So all of these things coming out in the press just give us that entry to be able to say, let's talk about it. And we've been doing that at, at Qualcomm, we do it with, uh, with our employees. I want people to feel free to ask questions um, and not think that they should know it all. Um, this is actually you know, a fairly new area, so we've got to allow all of our leaders to have a level of comfort, but also know they don't have to be uh, perfect in every single thing they say. Just be inquisitive um, and, and really start the discussions. When you are pitching Qualcomm as a potential employer to, to young women, right. what is your value proposition? I mean, we heard, we heard Fei-Fei Lee during the keynote yeah. talk about um, 
there is a real crisis. If right. women are not actively involved in creating the next generation right. of artificial intelligence, right. and we're half of the end users, right. that there is going to be this real disconnect between the technology and, and the and, and how it's used. And, and as a product leader, um, I have always been fascinated by um, these public stories of product failures that um, no one was trying to make them fail, but it was very clear that they didn't have a diverse team because they just had some really big misses. So one of the things we talk about Qualcomm, you know, we're a wireless technology company. We started with 3G and now 4G LTE. That whole uh, wireless technology, the backbone of it, is all Qualcomm tech, um, and it allows us to go into 5G 5G is where the thing gets exponentially uh, more interesting, more exciting. Uh, a, a much wider set of problems to solve um, can be solved through 5G. So if we don't have a diverse set of people thinking about all the different um, use cases, variables, uh, that we can use 5G technology, we'll miss something big. And I, I, and I know that our CEO believes that, we talk about it. Um, we are, we are inventors, we are innovators, and we have to have um, a wider variety of people that are, are being inventors in the future. So, I just want to wrap up here, but finally ask you about this conference. This yeah. is not your first Grace Hopper. Right. Um, and, and it's a, it's a very young conference, and so you're really looked at as a veteran. I mean, me too. I mean, the, <laughs> right. we're the old bags in right, around this right, place. Right, right. But, can you just describe a little bit, I know you said you were introducing one of the keynote speakers and you got to meet a personal hero yeah, of yours. Yeah. Just what it's like to be here. It's, uh, it's really amazing. Uh, last year was my first year. Um, I was not the chief diversity officer a year ago yet. Uh, and I came here and you know, people like Telly Whitney, who you read about, um, I've gotten to meet her, like I, I can hug her. You'll never wash um, your hand again. I know, again. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Um, you know, the, the women that have been um, leading this for years and years and years, and now what this has turned out to be, um, it's, uh, I was talking to one of my colleagues and I go to a lot of technical conferences um, and business conferences like CES. CES is almost, uh, is where we should be here kind of meeting in the middle. A lot more men here in years to come and a lot more women at CES and I think that's when we'll know that we're actually making progress. Great. Well Vicki, thank you so much for joining us. Yes, thank you, thanks for having me. I'm Rebecca Knight, we will have more from theCUBE's coverage of Grace Hopper just after this.